Hello and uh, welcome to the latest instalment in our Lunch and Learn webinars. Today's topic is the basis of plant design. Uh, my name is Sarah Fry and I'm the Business Development and Communications Manager here at the Institute of Quarrying. These Lunch and Learn webinars are designed to give a short overview on a range of topics aligned to the skills wheel. The webinar itself is recorded and will be made available to all registrants. So look out for that follow up email with the links to the recording. During the presentation, if you have any questions, please just type them into the questions box on your screen. And if there is time, we will answer these at the end of the presentation. If we don't have time to cover the questions, all questions submitted will be answered and distributed to attendees after the webinar. At the end of today's session, you'll receive a short feedback form. Please do take the time to complete this as it will help us develop these webinars for the future. If you enjoy today's webinar, the next webinars will be covering topics such as leadership and well-being. Uh, but just before I introduce today's speaker, we'd also like to draw your attention to forthcoming branch events taking place around the country. For more information on these, please contact your local branch or visit the IQ website at quarrying.org. These events, like today's webinar, provide really valuable CPD opportunities for all members. So on to today's webinar topic basis of plant design and our speaker is Nick Peatling from NIRAC. Welcome Nick and uh, please start the webinar. Thank you Sarah, thank you very much. We'll start now I think basically to remember that plant design is very complex and nobody's designed a plant in half an hour over a lunch time. So we're going to be quite basic but as I've said if you've got any questions you can ask them later on. So good afternoon and today I will give you a brief overview of some of what we consider during plant design. Naira, our company, specializes in fixed plant. Initial considerations will be your reserves, the market you're going out to, the type of aggregate you're extracting, the capacity of your plant, the lifespan of your plant, and how the final product will go out to market. Will it be lorry, train, or ship? Timescales and environmental impact are also of importance and the location of the plant and how this will affect those who live near it. It is unusual to have two plants designed exactly the same. Plant types will differ to suit the material type. Is this to be a new, is it to be a new plant or an extension to exist it? If it's an extension, we should have as little impact on the operation of the existing plants. After each slide, there'll be a short pause to allow you to view the slide and ask any questions. I will probably not be able to answer them straight away due to the time constraints. This is a brief introduction. Here is a brief introduction of myself and the company that I am part of. Please have a read through. All aspects of plant design cannot be covered during the brief time we have today, but I'd welcome the opportunity to discuss further with you anything you want later on. Specialist contracts and contractors and suppliers. We work in a specialist industry that requires specialist contractors and suppliers who are familiar with all the legislation, codes and practices. Contractors who are used to the demanding environment we all work in with deadline and cost implications. Contractors who are aware that safety, maintenance, access and practicality of the plant are paramount and we will try and factor all these in at the initial design stage. The slide shows photos of recent installations that we have done, the above being a shoot hopper to replace the primary crusher which was taken out of Croft Quarry for relocating at Barden and a replacement screen installation. I have many more photographs but I know you're on a short half hour lunch so there won't be that many later on. Thank you. Dump trucks, or oh, sorry, transport, dump trucks or conveyors. Plan for the future in quarry design. Locate equipment to reduce the sterilizations of your reserves. Have long-term projections to consider the options of truck movements against conveyors. Trucks require haul roads, fuel, maintenance, and what working hours can you operate the trucks at? When considering conveyors, you may have increased running times, standardization on equipment and components, flexibility, 
costs and they can be relocated within the quarry. Consider the lifespan of the equipment and always design in to the future. Allowing the layout of internal routes within the plant for quarry equipment, pedestrian and road going lorries. All must have a safe means to get around the plant and the equipment. Example of in-pit crushing with conveyor system. Semi-mobile in-pit crushing can give high tonnages and has the ability to be moved within the quarry. Conveyors can be relocated and equipment reused. Capacity can be in excess of 2,000 tonnes an hour. This is a field conveyor system delivering primary crushed product to the processing plant. The field conveyor gives good access both sides and is covered to reduce dust. It is mounted on timber sleepers and installed in sections. This is easy to maintain, relocate and inspect and allows for changes in ground levels. This particular conveyor has the electrical cabling running down to the primary crusher, so there is no need to bury cables under the ground. This is a semi-mobile crusher in the process of being moved to a new location. It is based on a steel frame with a housing over the top. Most crusher suppliers can now offer this as an option, as well as specialist suppliers like Mantakra. They require less infrastructure uh, and are cost comparable against a concrete alternative and can be moved with ease and are now a well-established alternative to a fixed location. The semi-mobile gives the flexibility to design for the future from the outstart. Career routes can be modified to suit the new primary location, but you have downtime and loss of production when the plant is being moved. This is a typical transfer point. Shown here is a transfer point that is from one conveyor to another. Transfer points are one of the most interesting things to design and get right. Nobody wants spillage or excess wear. Transfer points need to be fixed and require extra work to be relocated should they need to be moved. But these should be designed to give good transfer heights, good access, stone boxes, safeguarding, all this should be designed in at the start. The number of transport transfer points should be kept to a minimum to reduce wear on shoots and noise. Safe access is paramount to allow the inspection of equipment, tension units and the changing of liners. Design it in from the start and work with the people who will be tasked with these operations to ensure that their requirements are understood. Storage and loadout. This particular slide shows a bin unit with a lorry loadout. This reduces shovel movements, manual handling, and allows blending and reprocessing of materials, all with high degrees of accuracy. This is, the, this is from a set of bins direct to a lorry loadout system, and then allows road going trucks, it allows road going trucks to be fed prior to passing over a way bridge. A similar system can be used for loading of quarry dump trucks. Environmentally friendly when equipped with dust suppression. The upper section of the bins contains a screen house, which sizes material which is stored in the bins below. When designing, or when we are designing, allow for how the material will flow and the wear characteristics of the material. Ensure value angles are correct for material type. Designing good, safe access flooring and maintenance beams as shown on the top level. This is covered ground storage, complete with a reversible conveyor. Reclaim is possible with a recovery system below the store. Individual storage bays are fed from reversible conveyor via a conveyor system from the bins. Shovel access to the store to allow loading and cleaning and reuse. The material is covered within a sheeted building 
to reduce dust. The bays can be of different sizes to maximise the size and capacity required for the plant's outgoing sales. Now, what's underneath the sheeting? This is a plant under construction and gives you an idea of what goes on inside. We're designing good storage, safe access, maintenance beams, overhead cranes with drop points to ground. We have to conform to planning requirements and to the client's specification. We have to select the right machines that are suitable for the duties and the products that they will be used, will be passed on to them. Ensure that shoot angles and liners are suitable for the product material and ensure what is designed can be fabricated, can be transported and can be installed. Phase deliveries to suit the programme and a note from me, always deliver the bolts prior to the steelwork. An alternative to covered storage or bins is the industrial standard ground storage known as the stockpile. Stockpiles have limited storage capacity, require large ground areas, can have dust and noise and exposed to the elements. Recently, stockpiles have had to be covered to conform to environmental requirements. On stockpiles and all conveyors in general, the angles of inclination have to be correct for the material size and the material type. Dry sizes need to be designed to allow the conveyor to be started from a stop position and when fully loaded. And backstops need to be fitted to incline conveyors within the drive units to stop run back. We have to design the mechanical items, the drums, the belting, the idlers and drives to suit the duty and the application. And then we have to add in some extra capacity. A problem with a stock park can also be cross-contamination of materials and the shovel movements required around the site. Time scales always have or will always have a realistic programme and consult with all parties involved in the project that the programme is achievable. Early planning avoids delays and extra costs. Phase the programme for each individual item and area. Update it if there are any changes. Always make all parties aware of the programme to achieve milestone dates. Elements of a program. Split, split the program to include all areas, check for overlaps and that resources are available to achieve the dates. Programs tend to slip. Careful planning at an early stage will reduce this. Remember, the program drives the project. Print it and fix it to a wall so that all can see. Costs. From the start of the project, have detailed costs with a cost breakdown and ensure cost accuracy. Obtain costs and how long they are fixed for. At the moment, steel prices are fluctuating, so they need to be tied down early within the project and with contractors. When you have your costs, always check the costs against the orders that are placed because the budget is what will dictate how successful the project will be. This is cost specific items. An estimate of requirements is required for all items within the project and dependent on the surface finish and the application within the project. Double check everything. Again, check the budget against orders placed. Cost specific proprietary items. This is part of the costing process. We work in an environment that is abrasive and harsh. Check that all the items are fit for purpose and will work in the correct environment. Get guarantees for the lifespan of the equipment and costs for spares, and will these be readily available? Go out to the market for costs and check lead time. On components, projects, it is most important to remember that buy on quality, not price. The most expensive is not always the best, but the cheapest cost will be there for a reason. Conveyor calculations. This is a typical printout of our power calculation program, which has been developed over many years. Ensure there is enough power to run the plant and what are the implications if there are not. This will avoid delays and extra costs. Always consult with specialist suppliers for the civil designs, the electrical design and the mechanical design. Turnkey is probably the better option with one contractor overseeing many subcontractors and with the client at the final end. Well, 
that's that's as far as we've got and it would take a considerable amount of time to cover all items of the basis of plant design dependent on plant size it can take many years from the initial concept to the final commissioning many areas have not been covered and this was only a brief overview. We all want to plan with the highest degree of safety, with good access, it's easy to maintain, with the maximum output, and that is going to be cost effective. Please start your planning now because there are fewer and fewer suppliers and contractors today who can meet the needs and demands of your requirements. Thank you for your time, and I hope your next project is your most successful. Thank you, Nick, and thank you to all of you who have taken the time out to join us today. Um, as with previous sessions, we'll be making the recording of the webinar and slides available to you all to access. So keep an eye out on that email from us. And if you have the chance, please provide your feedback um, on today's session. Um, and the questionnaire which will be displayed shortly and don't forget to register for any upcoming webinars that are of interest all details available on the events page of the IQ website thank you again for joining us today